The first law of thermodynamics states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Energy can only be transferred or changed from one form to another. It's not just a written law that governs this. Nature and creation prove that energy is matter, and matter does not just appear without a source. This fact, however, does not outlaw the option of free energy being added or transferred to boost and deliver a greater output energy as stated in the law of thermodynamics. In fact, you are probably already using technologies that does just that. Yes, the common heat pump air conditioning unit. These systems are preferred over other means of heating simply because they produce more output thermal energy than the input electrical energy. The energy ratio is typically around 3 kilowatts thermal energy for every 1 kilowatt of electrical energy consumed, giving an effective efficiency of 300%. One would argue that, according to the law of thermodynamics, it's impossible to have an efficiency of more than 100%, as this implies that more energy is being produced than is being put in. The reason that it appears there is more energy being produced is because the only valuable energy input is electricity used to drive the compressor and fans. The remainder of the energy simply transferred from a heat source that would otherwise not be used, such as the ambient air, so is not considered as an energy input. The ambient air is, in this example, free energy added or transferred to boost the total efficiency as permitted in the law of thermodynamics. The efficiency of the H2IL electrochemical energy solution is achieved in the same way. The remainder of the energy that equates to an efficiency greater than 100% simply transfers from a source that would otherwise not be used. The input power is a catalyst that, like the compressor and fans of a heat pump, simply draws in this free energy and enables the conversion to take place. The free energy that is being transferred is galvanic energy released from bimetals that exhibit differing voltage potentials. For example, the common dry cell torch battery consists of two metals of differing galvanic potential which cause electrons to move through a circuit from one metal to the other. H2IL devised a system that draws in this energy from bimetal electrodes to split the liquid electrolyte and produces pure hydrogen. The oxygen ion transfers a natural, free energy source into electrical energy, enabling a coefficient much greater than 100%. No laws of thermodynamics are being violated, but rather supported. Within all electrolysis cells, the anode electrode is eventually consumed. Therefore, one may conclude that within a galvanic arrangement, the less noble metal would be consumed quicker. This is not the case in this application. H2IL discovered a technique of forcing the electrolyte to become an ionic substance with a more positive potential and therefore effectively becoming the anode. The two electrodes of the cell become the cathode and therefore do not consume. The controlling system governs this electrochemical process to ensure that the electrolyte remains more anodic than the electrodes. The advantages of this method of renewable energy are game-changing. Due to its high efficiency, the system uses only a small portion of its own energy to self-power and produce a lot of usable energy. This enables self-powering hydrogen production and power generation stations small enough to accommodate localized energy facilities. When stacked up against other forms of alternative energies, this method looks very promising. A fully scalable system that can deliver energy day and night regardless of wind strength in virtually any location with rapid response to accommodate fluctuating power consumption and grid demand. An eco-friendly, self-sustaining power source that can fit directly into the current grid without transmission equipment enhancements. A versatile system that can eventually eliminate the larger power grid and provide localized electricity generation along with hydrogen supply.
When solar panels and storage batteries are consumed and decommissioned, they will end up as toxic landfill, resulting in a huge, repeating environmental issue. The only active item consumed in the H2IL method of renewable energy is metal electrodes. These decompose naturally over a very long period of time within the process, breaking down into minute particles that can eventually be recycled or put back into the earth in the same non-toxic form as when they were first mined. This breakthrough in technology is considered to be the most efficient and versatile energy solution known to modern science. We invite all to view the performance test videos located on this channel or the H2 Innovation Lab website, along with other presentations on this exciting breakthrough technology. If you know someone in a large corporation that might be interested in game-changing technology or energy, then we'd appreciate it if you could please forward on this information to them. Thank you for watching.